you have any criteria or or interest before you joining an organization or you just you know like just maximize enjoy as many as possible are were you selective when you join uh, an organization yeah i think uh, first i have to mention that joining the organization uh, there is opportunity cost this is economic term maybe so you you lose something like mm. you have to decrease some of your study hour or maybe you you have to manage that time from other things so mm. because uh, as a full time student particularly for the phd student they have the full time work and if you are the ga and uh, if you also have the family here living here and you also So have yeah, yeah, yeah. you also have GA, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That means this is a lot. So yes. my my experience is so you don't have to be engaged in many places in all the places. That's not possible. Sometimes it's like overload for you to manage all these things. Mm. Sometimes I also feel like that recently in the summer. So when everything is going on the regular track, maybe you can manage that way. But when something comes like a big challenge thing or struggle things and you have a lot of stress yeah so you cannot handle that because you have that stress for your study and also for the, your work and so families managing giving this time so you need to prioritize that's what i realize and you need to limit yourself so what is my limit so how much time i have to give Mm. for my study because that's your first priority mm. right you came here for the study so mm. study is your first priority and after that maybe if you would like to involve in one or two that other places and you have to think about how much time you need to give for that organization or for a particular role and how much that is stressful for you mm. i think that is very important and yeah so without that The main point is you cannot compromise your study being involved with other places. Mm. So in your case do you have any personal strategies or advice uh to balance um the engagement and the commitment to to each organization. For example, you have a schedule like a timetable mm -hmm. for your life uh as a PhD student? Yeah, so I think uh, in my experience that managing the time is first you have to set up your priority that's my first advice and that's the way of I am doing what is your first priority of course your study is your first priority and your GA work or what you are you this is your first priority mm. and you think about your calculated time everybody has 24 hours a day no more hours yeah and you need to sleep this is also <laughs> very important yes and so when you are engaging with other tasks maybe you need to think about maybe some tasks or involvement is more related with your study mm. also maybe maybe your research interests yeah that might helpful for you in the future or maybe your career track like you say even after the phd the basically three career track either you go for teaching research or services mm. but of course the one person cannot be only one place it can be even as a professor you you might have to do all the three tasks right yeah so you need to prioritize one thing so and if you are at the beginning phase not to take much outside of the your course work responsibility because you need to learn how much that helpful for you whether you can have the enough sleep after taking that additional tax or not that you you should keep in mind okay uh okay so i hope the the listener the listener of our podcast can see that there is first there is a strong connection between your selections of um the services uh, mm -hmm. that you are going to in the community you decide to engage that has to strongly connected with your research interests and your career track mm -hmm. and second you need to even you engage uh, in a com communities or organization you need to also see where your priorities mm -hmm. are and uh, be mindful about how many hours actually how many hours a week 
um, in addition to studying and teaching or any other commitment that you're going to engage in in that uh, organization. So, uh, but now today there's a lot of students who are um, doing their PhD online. Mm-hmm. Um, so, do you think that these opportunity, like for example, the cross-border international education group that you are joining, uh, are they also suitable for people in different backgrounds? Uh, for example, student off campus or student who doing the degree online. Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course. Like uh, even after the COVID pandemic, there has been a big paradigm shift in the education and instruction. So even like not only that cross-border education research team, even in the university, like if you like to join some of the committee, mm. they have been almost they organize the events or the meeting in the hybrid mode. Mm. So that in person also, also they have like that virtual meeting at the same time because the pandemic has taught people about that. So that's the reason like even like many of the courses they have in the both modality and hybrid modality. Yeah. So I think they can engage that way and they need to find not only within the university, outside of the university also there are certain platforms like I say in NASA. Syracuse? Ah yeah, yeah, yeah. you NASA, learn about NAFSA. NAFSA also CIES, also there are AIEA, there are different platforms. Mm. But I'm telling this organization name because this is more about international education. But Which the, is connected to yeah, your career track, yeah, guys. Yeah, that's connected yeah. with my career track. But there are several o- other organizations, like you said, if you are interested in, in like linguistics, there are, there are different society, different platforms. They have been doing some research work collect- collaboratively. Yeah. So I think this is really important. Mm, yeah, I, I, I feel like, first of all, you can first start with like doing a research first uh, on on the internet uh, but then for example when you go to a NAFSA conference mm-hmm. what you get there is the contact is real people mm-hmm. is real community and authentic communication so from them you can maybe more no more specific other organization and then you start to to pay attention to the committee they have within mm-hmm. that that organization so many phd students are actually afraid of networking um, and um, basically it can be because of their personality for example they are introverted mm-hmm. uh, or they are more reserved uh, and and more you know afraid of um, talking to to people that they don't know for example or they are also afraid of collaborating on vo- voluntary projects so can you share some tips uh, in your in your case about how you can establish a connection with a stranger in a conference for example and what can be some benefits of reaching out to different people when you are a PhD student yeah that's a that's a brilliant question and I think this is very important question for many of the peoples because it's all about the networking so even if you think about what you do after your phd so you need to settle somewhere in the job so you need to be known by some people in your field right Mm. so i i personally is very engaged person i i i don't think like whether it's because of like introvert or extrovert thing because personally I myself was categorized myself in the introvert <laughs> rather than the extrovert yeah. but I am well engaged with the people mm. so I do that different ways so it's not my current thing I have been doing that since for more than a decade so I do different ways so if I like to conference is one of the big place so I go to different conference and I look their profiles and if they are presenting something, sometimes I send them email before mm-hmm. I go to the conference because every people love to hear about their work. Yeah. Right? If you if you read some article, even now I do. If I read some article from some professor for my classwork, if I find that mm. interesting, I write that author. Mm. I find your. This is not a lot of time I need to take. I just write an email. And I, I really find that interesting. So I would, love, I would like to learn more about this. And that person is interested. I recently remember one of very 
senior researcher who is working in a very reputed university here i read one article uh, regarding that ethnography and education policy i wrote her and she replied and sometimes she also gives me some advice because we have the similar interests so i that way i connected with different peoples and sometimes i don't hesitate to ask question if i have any question any doubt even if that person is new to me i will ask right it's okay to ask so do you know some people or do you have some more idea about this and that sometimes that help that is very helpful to give you to connect closer mm. and also that helps you to connect with other people i remember when i was in this area i knew one of the person and he is working in organization and he introduced to me with more than 20 people <laughs> see yeah that happens yeah so i log and one is email another is my first priority is meeting mm. synchronous meeting i love to meet people so when you meet when you talk the connection is stronger that's my uh, experience my experience tells that so emailing and also i follow people in the linkedin mm. so linkedin is a good platform for follow up especially professional people exactly and emailing thing and read their articles and their books or something else and just give that way and sometimes make some connection like sometimes when i read some books i see that that people for example graduated from shaikh university because i am alumni of shaikh university <laughs> i tell them oh you are also from shaikh you i am also that gives people more connected i also know some professor here <laughs> yeah that way I, we connect we need to find some mm. common ground or connecting ground that may be the research interest that may be for your study area that may be for your geography language whatever the thing that we need some sort of that uh point to meet together yeah so networking isn't that difficult or an alienated thing to do right mm-hmm. it can be start with some very simple questions mm-hmm. uh one email one click away and yeah. uh like you say just uh be there and engage with people around you in a conference or something like that yeah 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 so i can see that your phd actually phd study is has more fun and meaningful connection if i uh, we decide to um engage in some communities and services right um any final message you want to send out to doctor or doctor or student um on campus in general yeah so one of my experience is i i was so much lost with my research topic <laughs> i think this is very common for many yeah. students not only international all these students when they come from the different background and they want to uh, start their research and they have some idea sometimes that doesn't fit and sometimes that's not feasible because of not finding the appropriate data and different things this is sometimes struggling for example now i i find the, my way how i have been doing i am also al- almost like i i mean the good set but i struggle a lot because my topic Uh, let me tell about my topic so my topic i i was more passionate about working on caste based discrimination which is caste based discrimination is uh, a type of the discrimination like racial discrimination mm. so this is uh, particularly in south asia india nepal pakistan sri lanka this country we have that caste based mm. discrimination i try to because several people they don't know about that so that but i need to let them know what is that about and i may self also dig deeper because it is rooted in like long tradition it's not like 100 years old it's like several 100 years old type of that caste based structure so i'm digging on that and try to link with caste based discrimination internationally students or international mobility and also the social mobility these three concept i am trying to link is it is it it is st- struggling phase and when keep going reading when you find that appropriate resources literature that helps 
to find the right way and also the guidance from the faculty. Okay, so it's like a process mm -hmm. of staying reflecting on what you are doing. Yeah, and I how just it's want to say, to don't be scared about it. It's a natural thing. I also struggle with that. <laughs> Several students struggle with that. Yeah. Some students tell, some students don't tell, but everybody struggles with the same page. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, one of our guests, uh, when we did uh, the episode on navigating the first year of PhD, uh, and especially for scholars who are doing quality research, quality is like a mysterious mm -hmm. uh, journey where you just keep making sense mm -hmm. of a phenomenon of what is happening. And mm -hmm. it takes a very painful um look into the data and also connect the data or the observation with uh, previous scholar or with even scattering like mm -hmm. you're saying the three concepts that yeah, you yeah, say yeah. you try to find a connection and um, but with reasoning right so I think it takes time yeah and um, and uh, I hope that uh, during your services and engagement with the community that you select, they can somehow inspire you or show you, guide you the way um, that help your research at the same time as well. Yeah, I am very much optimistic about that and there are several people who want to help me. But my advice is don't hesitate to ask. Yeah. Don't hesitate, don't assume anything, please ask. So the only worst thing is if some people some people may not respond, that's the only worst thing, but yeah. it doesn't hurt anything. Yeah, that is the thing, is I think as a human being, we are scared of being rejected. Mm -hmm. Even we apply for an organization, exactly. a committee, yeah. or send some email, like yeah. you say, we just... But the worst scenario is what we, we knew about the worst scenario and be prepared already, like they mm -hmm. didn't reply. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't... Real, it doesn't mean that they yeah. dislike you or something, right? Yeah. Maybe they're busy or something. Yeah, busy Just sometimes don't people care. can miss. Yeah. Don't personalize like that yeah. thing. So if you personalize that, that hurts you a lot. Yeah, and, if, and then that makes you less active. Exactly. Mm. Yeah, don't. I. that's why when I send the email, I don't expect anything. <laughs> yeah. So if you expect something, there is a problem. Right? Yes. If you don't expect, that's my job. So <laughs> I, I read that some person's article, I like that, so I send. Yeah. I don't expect whether that person will reply me or not. If and you reply, that's fine. Yeah. If not reply, that's <laughs> fine. Yeah, and everyone, that's how Cam is actually um, overcome all the obstacles um, in regarding to networking and how he can be su successful in the community that he chooses to engage. Um, just be open-minded, uh, stay consistent in with what you are doing and where you are going, uh, and don't assume anything. Don't be afraid to the ask. The final thing I need to tell, I yeah. think it's very helpful. So, yeah. so one is like, there are resources. There are resources. There are resources. Mm -hmm. like in the universities, outside of the universities. So if you are struggling with something, mm, yeah. don't keep that just yourself. Share the people. Tell the people that I'm struggling with that. Mm. Some people have some idea. Mm. Maybe very simple idea that mm. led you out from that struggle. Mm. Like in the university, because this is a very common thing, like yeah. we, we go through stress and a lot of anxiety sometimes depressed this is very common mm. but don't hesitate to ask because we have like counseling services here mm. go to that people they are trained and they are very active people they they have you need some space to speak about what is happening to you mm. right yeah so go to there and take the service to going to the counseling center is sometimes like culturally it stick Stigmatize, mm. but take it like yeah. stigmatize. Mm. Yeah, take it very easy thing. Mm. It's a very common thing. You have a problem. There are some people who is expertise to help out mm. you from that problem. Okay, so thank you so much, Cam, for yeah. joining us in this episode, and all the best to what you are doing um, as a doctor or student. Yeah, so it's my pleasure. Yeah, thank you for once again. Thank you for inviting <laughs> me, Mary. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and see you in the next episode. Okay. Yeah. yeah.